The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger Chapter 6 Some things are hard to remember. I'm thinking now of when Stradler got back from his date with Jane. I mean, I can't remember exactly what I was doing when I heard his goddamn stupid footsteps coming down the corridor. I probably was still looking out of the window, but I swear I can't remember. I was so damn worried, that's why. When I really worry about something, I don't just fool around. I even have to go to the bathroom when I worry about something, only I don't go. I'm too worried to go. I don't want to interrupt my worrying to go. If you knew Stradladder, you'd have been worried too. I'd double dated with that bastard a couple of times, and I know what I'm talking about. He was unscrupulous. He really was. Anyway, the corridor was all linoleum and all, and you could hear his goddamn footsteps coming right towards the room. I don't even remember where I was sitting when he came in, at the window, or in my chair, or his. I swear I can't remember. He came in griping about how cold it was. Then he said, Where the hell is everybody? It's like a goddamn morgue around here. I didn't even bother to answer him. If he was so goddamn stupid not to realize it was Saturday night and everybody was out or asleep or home for the weekend, I wasn't going to break my neck telling him. He started getting undressed. He didn't say one goddamn word about Jane. Not one. Neither did I. I just watched him. All he did was thank me for letting him wear my hound's tooth. He hung it up on a hanger and put it in the closet. Then, when he was taking off his tie, he asked me if I'd written his goddamn composition for him. I told him it was over on his goddamn bed. He walked over and read it while he was unbuttoning his shirt. He stood there, reading it, and sort of stroking his bare chest and stomach with this very stupid expression on his face. He was always stroking his stomach or his chest. He was mad about himself. All of a sudden, he said, For Christ's sake, Holden, this is about a goddamn baseball glove. So what, I said, cold as hell. What do you mean, so what? I told you it had to be about a goddamn room or a house or something. You said it had to be descriptive. What the hell's the difference if it's about a baseball glove? God damn it. He was sore as hell. He was really furious. You always do everything back asswards. He looked at me. No wonder you're flunking the hell out of here, he said. You don't do one damn thing the way you're supposed to. I mean it. Not one damn thing. All right, give it back to me then. I said. I went over and pulled it right out of his goddamn hand. Then I tore it up. What the hell did you do that for? He said. I didn't even answer him. I just threw the pieces in the wastebasket. Then I lay down on my bed, and we both didn't say anything for a long time. He got all undressed, down to his shorts, and I lay on my bed and lit a cigarette. You weren't allowed to smoke in the dorm, but you could do it late at night when everybody was asleep or out, and nobody could smell the smoke. Besides, I did it to annoy Stradladder. It drove him crazy when you broke any rules. He never smoked in the dorm. It was only me. He still didn't say any single solitary word about Jane. So finally I said, You're back pretty goddamn late if she only signed out for 9.30. Did you make her be late signing in? He was sitting on the edge of his bed, cutting goddamn toenails when I asked him that. Couple of minutes, he said. Who the hell signs out for 9.30 on a Saturday night? God, how I hated him. Did you go to New York? I said. You crazy? How the hell could we go to New York if she only signed out for 9.30? That's tough. He looked up at me. Listen, he said. If you're going to smoke in the room, how about going down to the can and do it? You may be getting the hell out of here, but I have to stick around long enough to graduate. I ignored him. I really did. I went right on smoking like a madman. All I did was sort of turn over on my side and watched him cut his damn toenails. What a school. You were always watching somebody cut their damn toenails or squeeze their pimples or something. Did you give her my regards? I asked. Yeah. The hell he did, the bastard. What'd she say? I said, did you ask her if she still keeps all her kings in the back row? No, I didn't ask her. What the hell do you think we did all night? Play checkers, for Christ's sake? I didn't even answer him. God, how I hated him. If you didn't go to New York, where'd you go with her? I asked, after a little while. I could hardly keep my voice from shaking all over the place. Boy, was I getting nervous. I just had a feeling something had gone funny. He was finished cutting his damn toenails. So he got up from bed, in just his damn shorts and all, and started getting very damn playful. He came over to my bed and started leaning over me and taking these playful as hell socks on my shoulder. Cut it out, I said. Where'd you go with her if you didn't go to New York? Nowhere. We just sat in the goddamn car. He gave me another one of those stupid playful little socks on the shoulder. Cut it out, I said. Whose car? Ed Banky's. Ed Banky was the baseball coach at Pensy. 
Old Stradladder was one of his pets because he was the center on the team, and Ed Banky always let him borrow his car when he wanted it. It wasn't allowed for students to borrow faculty guys' cars. But all the athletic bastards stuck together. In every school I've gone to, all these athletic bastards stick together. Stradladder kept taking these shadow punches down at my shoulder. He had his toothbrush in his hand, and he put it in his mouth. What'd you do? I said. Give her the time at Ed Banky's goddamn car? My voice was shaking something awful. What a thing to say. Want me to wash your mouth out with soap? Did you? That's a professional secret, buddy. This next part I don't remember so hot. All I know is I got up from the bed like I was going down to the can or something, and then I tried to sock him with all my might right smack in the toothbrush so it would split his goddamn throat open. Only I missed. I didn't connect. All I did was sort of get him in the side of the head or something. It probably hurt him a little bit, but not as much as I wanted. It probably would have hurt him a lot, but I did it with my right hand, and I can't make a good fist with that hand, on account of that injury I told you about. Anyway, the next thing I knew, I was on the goddamn floor, and he was sitting on my chest with his face all red. That is, he had his goddamn knees on my chest, and he weighed about a ton. He had hold of my wrist, too, so I couldn't take another sock at him. I'd have killed him. What the hell's the matter with you? He kept saying, and his stupid face kept getting redder and redder. Get your lousy knees off my chest, I told him. I was almost bawling. I really was. Go on, get off of me, you crummy bastard. He wouldn't do it, though. He kept holding on to my wrist, and I kept calling him a son of a bitch and all for around ten hours. I can hardly remember what I said to him. I told him he thought he could give the time to anybody he felt like. I told him he didn't even care if a girl kept all her kings in the back row or not, and the reason he didn't care was because he was a goddamn stupid moron. He hated it when you called him a moron. All morons hate it when you call them a moron. Shut up now, Holden, he said with his big stupid red face. Just shut up now. You don't even know her first name is Jane or Jean, you goddamn moron. Now shut up, Holden. God damn it. I'm warning you, he said. I really had him going. If you don't shut up, I'm gonna slam you one. Get your dirty, stupid moron knees off my chest. If I let you up, will you keep your mouth shut? I didn't even answer him. He said it over again. Holden, if I let you up, will you keep your mouth shut? Yes. He got up off of me, and I got up too. My chest hurt like hell from his dirty knees. You're a dirty, stupid son of a bitch of a moron, I told him. That got him really mad. He shook his big, stupid finger in my face. Holden, goddammit, I'm warning you now. For the last time, if you don't keep your yap shut, I'm gonna... Why should I? I said. I was practically yelling. That's just the trouble with all you morons. You never want to discuss anything. That's the way you can always tell a moron. They never want to discuss anything intelligent. Then he really let one go at me, and the next thing I knew, I was on the goddamn floor again. I don't remember if he knocked me out or not, but I don't think so. It's pretty hard to knock a guy out, except in the goddamn movies, but my nose was bleeding all over the place. When I looked up, old Stradladder was standing practically right on top of me. He had his goddamn toilet kit under his arm. Why the hell don't you shut up when I tell you to? He said. He sounded pretty nervous. He probably was scared he'd fractured my skull or something when I hit the floor. It's too bad I didn't. You asked for it, goddammit, he said. Boy, did he look worried. I didn't even bother to get up. I just lay there on the floor for a while and kept calling him a moron son of a bitch. I was so mad I was practically bawling. Listen, go wash your face, Stradladder said. You hear me? I told him to go wash his own moron face, which was a pretty childish thing to say, but I was mad as hell. I told him to stop off on the way to the can and give Mrs. Schmidt the time. Mrs. Schmidt was the janitor's wife. She was around 65. I kept sitting there on the floor till I heard old Stradladder close the door and go down the corridor to the can. Then I got up. I couldn't find my goddamn hunting hat anywhere. Finally, I found it. It was under the bed. I put it on and turned the old peak around to the back the way I liked it and then I went over and took a look at my stupid face in the mirror. You never saw such gore in your life. I had blood all over my mouth and chin and even on my pajamas and bathrobe. It partly scared me and it partly fascinated me. All that blood and all sort of made me look tough. I'd only been in two fights in my life, and I lost both of them. I'm not too tough. I'm a pacifist if you want to know the truth. I had a feeling old Ackley had probably heard all the racket and was awake. So I went through the shower curtains into his room, just to see what the hell he was doing. I hardly ever went over to his room. It always had a funny stink in it, 
because he was so crummy in his personal habits.